Is it a little bit low? I'm also using a new set of headphones, so I'm not sure if it's good. Okay, let's get started here. Um, so this, what we're going to go through here is, uh, oh, thanks. Perfect. Um, uh, so we're going to go through the uh, the book, uh, the free ebook, which is actually right here. Um, thanks, Albert. Uh, how to create and sell your your machine learning product online and for free. Hi, Eunice. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, recognize some names. Uh, so uh, this book, right? It's it's a free book that I've uh, I've I've been uh, I've had it for like a year, but I've been updating it. I'm I'm gonna, I'm going to update it again. But um, it's uh, I think a really critical book for anybody who does data science, who does applied data science, who wants to see the big picture. I think it's a really it's a really critical idea. Uh, the idea is not, there's nothing magic. It's really you know uh, extending Python and going to uh, f through using Flask and and the web. Um, if you want to get the book, it's super easy. You go to uh, on viralml.com, go to uh, learn. I assume most of you already have the book, but just in case, go to the machine learning track. And it's the first course. So it's kind of like the free inter introduction course to the series. And you simply sign up here and there's an autoresponder. So it will send it to you along with the, uh, the Jupyter extracts or, or uh, links to the Jupyter extracts and uh, the, 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 the ebook as well as the... the uh, a link to the teachable class because it's also a video class. So I'm, tr I'm trying not to repeat uh, too much of the intro stuff because you can get it from the the ebook e or from the class. Which I just want to say one quick thing on this ebook. Um, uh, so this is kind of the end product. That's one thing I added recently. I didn't never had the the end product of what we we're building at the beginning of the book, and I think it kind of encourages people to go through it. And what's important here, I'm sorry for scrolling so much here. Let me just go to one of the the graphics. Is this one? Most of us in Python, we tend to focus on, you know, the Jupyter Notebook. We, uh, you know, like a lot, a lot of a lot of us have done Kaggle competitions. We get a CSV. Somebody hands us a CSV. We will do some Jupyter, uh, you know, a uh, little EDA. We'll do some machine learning research, and then we'll have a score, right? And this is such a, it's really not, as you probably know, it's not representative of the real world. Ninety-nine point nine percent of the real world, the, the final product is not a score. The final product is, is your customer making use of what you're building. So oftentimes you will have to talk to your customer. You'll have to even uh, figure out if there is a if there is data, where is the data? And a lot of, lot of situations I've worked, there's n you don't even have an outcome variable. So you have to figure out what's the type of outcome variable. Then you have to validate it with them to make sure it's, you know, something you can do something with it. Um, and then, you know, it's uh, doing, the, doing the research, keeping the model as simple as possible because oftentimes is somebody uh, a data analyst that's going to be um, that's going to have to maintain it and you know you don't want to overwhelm them with more work with a very complicated ensemble of models so you know you usually try to keep it as simple as possible and then this is what we talk a lot you know in my classes is kind of doing the SAS the web application so you can really extend your ideas your vision your what you want to share with the world uh, through Flask Bootstrap and the cloud and in this particular course we'll be doing we'll be extending it using Python Anywhere which is a great platform and what I like about this course is everything is free. Uh, a lot of uh, um, cloud platforms, they give you credits like DigitalOcean or App Engine, Google App Engine will give you credits. Uh, Python Anywhere really has a slice that's free, that's free forever. So you can get a simple site, very simple, up and running. And that's what we're going to leverage here. Okay, so, um, and this is kind of what the, the Jupyter extracts look like. Uh, and that's what we're just going to start digging in. And, and if you got any questions, let me know because I can actually see, uh, I see the message board. Um, this is something that this is like my, my fourth or fifth live YouTube. And the first one, I didn't even see the, the, the live chat and people were saying some really nice things and I never thanked them. So I felt really bad. So now I'm really paying attention. Uh, so also one tidbit of information here. Uh, this, this, uh, I've been, I've been, you know, doing this, this class for now for like a year, year and a half and a lot of things broke through time. So I went back and I revised a lot. And uh, before this, we used to do this with the Pandas data reader. We used to get the, the live data and Pandas re data reader was just, it was just a, it's a catastrophe because it's basically just a, a nice abstraction of, uh, you know, some really dirty scraping in the background. So it started scraping Yahoo Finance and they, they figured a way of stopping them from scraping that data for free. Uh, then he went to Google, uh, you know, Google Finance and he went to Robinhood and eventually they all, you know, figured it out and stopped, you know, you know, either change enough 
tags in their uh, you know in their code or you know just put some some anti robots uh, systems in the background so the best system is we're gonna get it from uh, Kaggle so Kaggle has a uh, five years of the S&P 500 stocks uh, they generally they, they graciously make it available um, I actually took a copy of it and put it on github so we don't all hit the the um, the, the Kaggle service and also the, if anything changes on Kaggle then you know this will work because I'm not going to change it so what I recommend people do if you if you haven't done this before is you know go in go go to the extract and kind of co copy and paste that's what I'm doing you know so I have a brand new Jupyter notebook here and I'm just going to co copy and paste and uh, take it from there so hopefully you know I'm assuming all of you know how you know how to use Jupyter you have it installed if not Jupyter is, is a phenomenal uh, exploration tool for Python users and for Julia users for others as well uh, phenomenal you know and, and there are tons of information on how to get it running for your OS and for your Python version we're doing everything in Python 3 here as you can see in the upper right here so a uh, quick quick uh, review of what we brought in here in terms of libraries. Uh, we brought in you know, a lot of usual stuff, the pandas, so we can work with data frames, the matplotlib, so we can plot stuff, date, time, random, numpy, so we can do number work. Uh, we brought uh, some uh, zip file and URL lib because we're going to be uh, downloading data directly from the GitHub repo, which is zipped. And um, uh, and that's sometimes that's, that's a bit, uh, uh, it's too bad because if it was not zipped, if you had your CSV on your GitHub repo or anywhere online, you can download it directly using pandas.csv. Unfortunately, once it's zipped, you can't. And uh, I could not put everything up on, on GitHub. There was a size limit, so I had to zip it. So this works in Python 3. This will not work in Python 2. So you have to do some research if you want to do it. Otherwise, just go directly, just you know, copy and paste the link and just paste it in your browser and just download it manually. So first time you run it, you're going to do local false. So I'm going to run it right now so that you that, you know you hit the servers. And then one nice thing about this process uh, is it will the, the zip file will automatically, this process here will automatically save a copy, a local copy. And uh, so you don't have to physically save it. You just have to read it. And next time around, you just hit true because you already have a local copy. And uh, you know, it'll, same thing will happen, right? It's just gonna load it. It'll look at the one you have already saved and it will, it will run it. And you need to save a copy here because once we move it to um, Python uh, anywhere, we're gonna be using uh, a saved copy. We're not, gonna do, uh, we're not gonna be downloading online. That's one thing you can't do on the free tiers. So what do we have here? Typical, typical stock market data. Well, there's a few things that are interesting here. You have, um, you know, you have your, your typical date, open, high, low, close. You have volume and the stock name. And if you compare that with another site I go to all the time is uh, Yahoo Finance. If you compare that with the downloads on finance.yahoo.com, let's go for Google, for example. And, and you go to the historical tab. This is where I get most of my data because uh, I tend to work on, on, on focused stocks. I don't need to, to download 500 of them at a time. You'll see here that you have a date, open, high, low, close, adjusted close volume. There's no, there's no stock name, right? That's, that's what's interesting here, is here we have a stock name. And what I like about this is it's very much of a log format. If you have, uh, so we, we're doing this project is, is, is playing with data, uh, stock market data, but it, it could be very well uh, web server log data. It could be any type of log data where you have, you know, a timestamp and a label, a tag name and message. So here we're going to have to do some data manipulation. We're going to have to kind of untangle this because if you sort it by date, If you sort it by that, you'll notice that the first row really has nothing in common with the second row. They're, the only thing they have in common is a date. They both were stock uh, prices at a same date, but they're completely different stock stock products, completely different uh, dollar scales, right? So th this, you cannot use this. You can't model this from scratch like this because it would be very hard. There's, there, you have uh, five years per date and you have, you know, everything is separated by a stock name. So that's, that's really tough. So, uh, and that's actually what we're doing in this chapter. I'm just gonna keep copying and pasting. First, we're gonna do a little kind of EDA. So this was one thing that I always get burned all the time, and I work with time series data all the time, is uh, first of all, make sure that you are dealing with a time, time frame, right? A, a date time. Most of the time when you download them, for, for example, from a CSV from, uh, from uh, Yahoo Finance, they're objects. You need to make sure they're di date times because matplotlib can do fantastic displaying of, of tags and all that if it knows it's a date time. If it, knows an, if it thinks it's an object, it can't really do much. So you always cast it to date time by calling pd.dateTime uh, 
date two dot underscore date time you know we pass it the field and this is a critical one so if you've ever worked with stock market data you probably already know this but always sort your stuff by date in ascending order because i work oftentimes with yahoo finance and then i also work with uh, uh you know uh um, federal bank sites and i've noticed that some like to do ascending order others like to do descending order and i've gotten in trouble when i then uh, you know join them together or like or, or do um uh, apply separately, apply moving averages or percentage changes separately, and you get a completely different result. So anytime you do moving averages, you always want to sort things by ascending order because uh, you want to start averaging stuff from the old stuff, working your way towards the new stuff. So here, so this is what we did, right? So this, we kind of sorting it by date. We, we transformed it by date and we sorting an ascending order. Now we know we're good. So um, I think we're doing a little EDA. We're going to see the, the, the min max date. Always good to see how much data we have. And we have five years indeed, 2013, February, 2018, February. So five years, that's, that's quite good. Um, the describe function is really cool. Kind of tells you, it describes the numerical stuff. And kind of tells you off the bat, right? Confirms that we have, you know, some 619,000 rows. Uh, we see also the range of stocks. We have it between the min and the max. That's interesting. We have stocks that are in the dollar range and stocks in the 2000 range. So quite a, quite, quite a big range. And this is where you would look for uh, outliers, right? If you saw something like a negative number, uh, you know, where the stocks don't trade negatively, or if you saw something in the billions, you know, those, those would have to be, you know, pruned out uh, in order to model it. Otherwise, I'll throw your models away. Uh, the shape, I would kind of, you know, this, I, I know I'm repeating what's on the, in the other one, and some may not be that necessary, but uh, shape, we confirm, right? 600 and, and uh, 619,000 rows. And this I like, this is an interesting one here. The number of unique stocks. So right, remember this, um, uh, what, did it, what did we do here? Okay, yeah, remember the name field is a stock name, the symbol of the stock. So we're gonna have repeats, right? So we take this, that field, basically, we take a, a panda series of all the symbols and we do a set on it. So a set's gonna you know, remove all the duplicates and give you, a, you the unique values, and then you do the length. And we see we have 505, and that's interesting because yeah, it's, it's S&P 500 and there's 505 symbols. So I think it's because um, uh, you know, some stocks get listed, delisted, and historically we're still looking at the delisted one, whether they went bankrupt, whether they were removed because they, 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 you know, they went lower over a threshold or they were not complying with something, something for the S&P 500, they got removed. So that's why we're seeing a few extra ones. Uh, and that's what I think it is. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but that's my theory. Oops. Um, so let's do uh, one thing we're going to do is we're going to, we can pull a few of these and plot them out. So we have Microsoft, let's do Google, let's do something different. Oh. Copy why is not oh. Oh, it is it is Google. It's just the title has not changed. Okay, fine. So this is Google. Look at that, right? Uh, so we definitely indeed confirm it starts and now uh looks like uh did I do a, a time stop? No, okay. It should it looks like it's a little this should be a little bit more but we you know, clearly have, a, we're clearly in the middle of a bull market uh, leg between 2013 to 2018. Uh, Google is doing great. Uh, I think I also looked at the banking one that was, was a little bit more, uh, not as, um, oh, oh, sorry, I need to do that here. This would be worthwhile putting a ver uh, having a variable to set these in multiple places. Normally I would do that. Right here, yeah, this is it, right? So you see, you see, C, I think, is Citigroup. You see, it's kind of, you know, it's more or less flat from 2013, kind of went down in 2016, but did phenomenally well uh, all the way to, you know, February 2018. So we, we're not seeing what's going on right now. Okay, so we have our data. Uh, it looking good. I think that's all we're doing in terms of the data. So now we need to. Um, okay, this is this is this is a, a complicated one, and and this is I think uh, very interesting because uh, we are going to. Uh, we're basically going to create, uh, so, so when, you're, when you're modeling time series data, when you, you know, the typical, like old school statistics, they would use like a, a, a RIMA model, they would use um, a survival model, the very modern school, they're going to use, you know, TensorFlow, LSTM, you know, some kind of a sequential model. Uh, and and uh, uh, so 
I honestly never really had that much luck with the the older statistical uh, tools. They're really good at like um, doing f financial forecasting, getting uh, uh, clear cyclical events like you know holidays or big shopping sprees out of the data. Uh, but um, and uh, also uh, I've used um, uh, many deep neural network models from TensorFlow, including some of the the new Keras 2.0, and done sequential data and also uh, mixed results. I've always had my best result by doing it this way. This has been the best way. It's really uh, it's a way of of we're basically going to uh, take ten periods of data. So if you think about it, let me see if I can explain this a bit better. Uh, and if you guys have any question, let me know. Or if I'm, if you want me to cover something in more depth, let me know as well. Uh, let's do this. Uh, well, this is a good one right here, right? We have uh, uh, this stock AAL. So we're going to take ten period, ten closing periods sequentially. So we're going to take 14.75, 14.46, 14.27, ten times, right? And we're then going to uh, uh, pivot it. So let's, let me just see. Let's look at 15 of these. Hopefully it's still or see it's still sorted by the symbol. That's good. So we're gonna take ten of these closes, right? So all the way to here. These are sequential in time. Uh, they're going from the past to the future to the present, and then we're gonna predict five days out, right? So take ten of these and predict, uh, uh, you know, on the the way one, two, three, four, five, one more day out, right? That's what we're gonna do. And the way we do it, and this is it's it's, it's, it's a, a fairly common way of doing time series data, is we're gonna take these ten prices and we're gonna pivot it. We're gonna pivot it into a row. Right now they're in a column, so we're gonna pivot them into a row and as and create an outcome variable to each one of these rows, which is gonna be the price five days out. So let me get to that. It's actually this is probably the slowest process. Well, the modeling is also slow as well. And we run it. So basically what it's doing, as you can see, it's kind of running through each one of our stock symbols. It's got to go through 505 symbols. But we ha that, that's going to give us time to look, uh, to go through this in detail. So we're going to create a unique stock symbols list, right? Same concept, list. Then you take the set of it. So you have the unique symbols and you make a list of it. And we're basically, then we're going to loop through that list stock by stock. And here we are creating our period and you can play with this this is the fun part uh, you can um, you can say I don't want to look at 10 days I want to look at 20 days you know maybe more history so it can understand so it can have a better understanding of the stock movements uh, so that's basically what you what you give it so this is what it's going to learn right it's really looking it's really learning about 10 days of movement and then it's going to try to predict the fifth day out after the movement end so that's what we're doing we're looping through each each stock, we're getting a copy of this set for this particular stock. So imagine we're at Google. This is going to be a new copy of a data frame of just Google. And then we're going to start, we're going to do two loops. The first loop is going to go from the, uh, the, the, the rolling period to the lengths of this entire data. So let's say we're doing 10 days. So it's going to start at day 10 all the way till the end. And remember, we're sorted uh, uh, in ascending order, right? So, so uh, it starts with the old stuff. And it, and it goes back to the to, to the to the to the newer stuff. And you know, if you, if you if you if you're if you're worried about it, you know, definitely uh, don't. You know, you, you, should, you shouldn't hesitate to. Um, I think it's still running yet, so it's not responding. But you you could very well add another sort sort here. So make sure you make sure that that you're sure in, that you know that it is in ascending order because uh, that's that's very important. And, and then so you're looping through each one of these uh, uh, of these sets, right? So uh, uh, stock by stock. And basically, we're going to create a window. It's a bit what you do if you've played around with TensorFlow and you've done windows uh, for convolutional neural networks or, or, or LSTMs. You take a window, and that's what we're doing. We're creating these 10 period windows, and we're going to move one period out, take another 10, one period out, another 10. But there's some complexities, right? Um, uh, so we create two, uh, two lists, the our x, uh, basically the values we're going to use to train, and y, what we're going to predict. And then we are going to, uh, uh, for that one, Right. For, for, for then we're going to get we're going to fill this value right here. We're just moving day by day, and here we're going to move ten. We're going to take ten days of data. Right. So we're going to have ten days of data. That's going to be the, the story of our uh, uh, of our uh, stock over ten days. What did it, what what happened to this stock over ten days? That's going to be the price of that stock during ten days. 
and we're going to save this into x underscore temp. We're also going to take the log transform. This is something that's been uh, very, very popular with uh, financial numbers, right? That can be very big, very small. Uh, you know, models work really well with small numbers, so it kind of scales it to something a lot smaller. And then, of course, we have to take the exponential of it because a log transform, we, we want to create a product for a customer in the end. A log transform value of a dollar amount is going to be useless to them. They won't know what it is. I won't know what it is. Uh, we're going to transform that, of course, to the exponential afterwards. So here, basically, we have 10 we have 10 period sequential periods of data, right? Uh, for the say stock Google. Once we've done, once we've gotten those 10, we're then going to append them to to this master, uh, our master X. Basically, it has all the these 10 periods uh, for 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 that one particular stock. Remember, where where it's, it's, it gets complicated, and then we append the uh, the outcome variable. The outcome variable we have to look out. We have to like say, you know, give me a uh, start at the end date where we are now and give me uh, five days out. That's what we want, five days out. Also taking the log transform of that data. And um, then we are, what are we doing here? We are uh, appending the dates. We want uh, two dates. We want the last market date of this 10 period series, so the 10th day. And we also want the day of the prediction, right? So this is when, this is the value we're predicting, right? This, this stock right here is what we're predicting five days out, we also want that day there. So we're getting quite a lot of information there. And then you know, uh, uh, we, we, we do also a, a master stock symbol list because this, this once it's gone through all of this, it's basically processed all of Google. So the part of the complexity is you can't you know, do these windows blindly. You gotta make sure you do only sequential data for a particular stock. You can't have you know, two periods leaking of Google leaking into Microsoft. It'll be, it wouldn't mean anything and it would be useless. Uh, so, so this way, so this loop it helps doing that. So one thing I'm gonna rewrite, this is part of, of, of the, the one area I want to upgrade, is there are actually f easier ways to do this uh, with, with, with group buys and there are even some windowing tools you could use. So this is some, one area I like to, 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 to upgrade and maybe see if it, if, if it does anything faster because it is a bit slow, right? So we did, the, we did the, so look at that. We have all our data. Let's take a peek now at our, uh, at our data that's now um, uh, ready to be modeled, really. Almost ready to be modeled. So what are we doing here? We're gonna, uh, we are, first of all, we have a bunch of um, uh, lists. We have lists of lists, right? X is a list of many lists of 10 days of, for different stocks. And we want to basically create a data frame. So we're going to cast that list to a data frame, that list of lists. And we're also going to uh, apply the naming, the, 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 um, uh, the names for each one of our, uh, our columns. And we're going to apply um, the the the, uh, the outcome variable for each one, right, of, of the of the entire set. This is a very large uh, value. If we, we can we can actually take a peek at it, see how big it is. All right, so quite a lot, 611. And um, uh, right, we're passing our dates. These are lists for the date, the the last uh, the the prediction date, the last date of that uh, 10 period and we pass a symbol and then let's see what we have takes a little time and look at that right so now we have this this is actually model ready really we have um, what do we have so uh, so we have a stock symbol name we have our prediction date which is going to be a uh, five days out from our last market date uh, we have our outcome variable which is five days out and we have our story right this is five um, this is uh, five days of, uh, 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 sorry, 10 days, right, really, of, of, st of a story of, of, of a particular financial instrument through time, right? So you could do 20 days, you could do uh, 300 days. And I hope, you know, hopefully it should be very familiar. If you work with TensorFlow models doing windowing, this should be very familiar because we basically just did what, what some of Keras tools will do for you uh, a lot easier. So even though um, LSTMs, I've, nev I've never had much luck with LSTMs doing this kind of, this kind of modeling, uh, the tools that Keras has are phenomenal because they'll do all of this for you uh, uh, fairly quickly and fairly automatically. Um, but now we, well, now we're ready. So actually, I want to cut this video at uh, at seven thirty. Um, is uh, let me know if there's any questions. Uh, if there are, you know, please please ask them. Um, and even though I will cover the modeling part uh, next week, that's what I'll do next week. I'll cover that modeling part. Let's just take. Let's just run through it quickly. If you know, if you can't make it next week, have a quick you know quick look at what it is. So we're, we're going to go really fast here. 
we are uh, taking the we're, we're splitting. We're going to be using this. You know, this is the the you know the tool we all use, train test split. Uh, we're going to create just the features. So features are going to be basically a list of everything we can't we we can use. We don't want to use a target prediction date, last market date, and symbol. And the target is the outcome. Uh, we are going to keep one stock out. We're going to keep uh, triple M out, uh, three M's out, because we're going to use that to then test it. So it's always good when you're doing these kind of models to keep um, to keep a set of data out uh, that 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 doesn't go through any other process. Ideally, even better, uh, in my opinion, is to um, the uh, take a stock out early off in the process. So I'm going to scroll up. You know, take a take a stock out right here take through three M's out here. This is really the best way because you never know if you did a mistake in your uh, in your data wrangling, your data processing, and you could taint you could taint your data. Maybe you did a, a moving average that's spilling a bit into the future, whatever. And even if you take, then if you take a, a triple M out here, it's still gonna be uh, here, right? It'll still be cheating, right? So it's something you could do uh, if you really wanted to be, to make sure that you didn't uh, taint anything. And this would be the, 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 the closest thing to waiting for 10 days of real life data and then, and then doing it afterwards, right? So you know, for example, this was the, that new data has never been seen or touched by any of your processes of your data wrangling, of your, your querying, if you're querying a database, right? You wanna keep it really clean, really segregated. This, this, is not the best way, right? Because it already went through our data wrangling. What if it was a bug here, right? What if I made a mistake somewhere here? I was looking at things backwards or whatever, right? You get the point. Um, that's so, but we're doing it here. Again, this is not a model to trade with, to trade, you know, the mo money with, you know, I would not recommend it. Um, I do not recommend it, uh, but uh, it's going to it's going to serve the purpose that we need. Uh, we are going to take. Um, are we doing a copy of it of, of only four hundred thousand rows because um, Python anywhere has a size limit? I think it's a hundred megs, uh, hundred meg cap. Yeah, right here, uh, cap. And uh, the the five hundred the five hundred thousand will 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 stop it. Will be over that. So. Um, and we also, uh, we can talk about this in, in, in next week's class more, but there's also plenty of different ways you can do your, your training and testing split. You can do time-based or you can do just pure random. Pure random is a bit, uh, it's a bit tougher because, you know, you, 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 you know, the, you know, the model has seen everything and you're asking it, you're basically asking it to, to, to predict on the past something that he has seen versus if you do a time-based model, actually I'm doing one for, for a customer right now, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're modeling everything up to a certain date and then we took an extra month out, a month and a half out, uh, 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 you know, basically in the future. And we are um, we are storing that. I'm not putting it any of the, the, the data wrangling or anything, completely separate. We're modeling, we're doing the, the data tuning, everything without ever looking at this, you know, out of sample uh, data set. And, um, and it's uh, uh, you know, and it's the way to go because I have been burned many times otherwise. So here, basically, we're, we're you know, this is very. If you're familiar with you know uh, with um, train test split, we're taking uh, we're passing our our transform data model ready. We're asking train test split to split it in a training testing uh, y train y test. So it's going to give us two data sets, four data sets really, uh, to uh, a full training. Uh, and, a f and a full, the outcome variable of that training set and a full testing uh, and the outcome variable of that testing. Uh, so, uh, sorry, this, that, I'm not, I, so I don't know if I said that right. So a full training to, to train, a full test to test and their corresponding outcome variables. Uh, train test splits require, you know, uh, ask for the entire data set, uh, the, the data set without the, um, uh, without the feature, w w just the, uh, the target variable. And I think, you know what, the one thing I need to do here is probably do this. Uh, let me just look at the code here quickly. Yeah, I mean, just to be sure, do this. This would be a better way of doing it because, like that, you're, you're making sure that the data does not have access to other uh, other features. But it looks like it's I've either done it somewhere else or not. But basically, it wants all the training features, uh, then the outcome features, and the test side, right? So this is how much you want to give to training and testing. You're saying you want to give 33% to uh, testing, and you're giving a random seed. That's always a good idea. So like that you can you know that example will always be reproducible, or you can even create a big loop run through the model many times and just have this assigned through a list and you'll be able to do a little bit of uh, you know ensembling or out of sample modeling uh, and then bring them all back together but here we see what we have and 
uh, before we end it, I am going to run the model just quickly. We can talk about this a lot more next week uh, for those who are going to come back. And here it is. We're running it. We're doing an RMEC or root mean squared error. So you are looking for your error right to go to, to decrease if you're doing an AUC area on the curve you'd be looking for the the number to increase all the way up to one so here we see it's decreasing which is good uh, you also don't want to see uh, too much of a variance between your training and your evaluation otherwise it means there's something you know funny going on with your data but it looks like it's going down uh, pretty well and we are running we're going to run this so what are we doing here we are uh, well XGBoost uh, it requires you to create matrices out of your um, out of your data, so you have to trans you have to do this. Uh, it takes a parameter where you can pass it all sorts of settings like the max depth. So this is a boosted model; it creates many little trees, and we're saying we want a tree with three features, no more. Uh, this is your step size. Uh, you know, if it um, if it's uh, you know uh, if it's not if it's not finding uh, if it's not decreasing well, look at that; it's kind of kind of getting stuck. That's no, it's not. It's still dec decreasing. You may want to uh, uh, you know make this uh, smaller. If it's just not moving fast, you may want to make it, you know, if it's just kind of uh, just meandering, you may want to make it bigger. you got to play around with the size. Uh, then you have the, the subsample and the call samples tree. These are things you can play with. Um, uh, they kind of uh, force, uh, if I remember correctly, I should have put the uh, little, little uh, notes here, but subsample, I think, is... Um, uh, basically, if, if, if it's set to 1, that means if it learns something, it's going to keep uh, uh, hammering on it. It's going to, you know, oh, I found something phenomenal, I'm going to keep using it. And if you force it to, to not always rely entirely on what it's learned, you're kind of injecting a little randomness in it. You say, you know, a point 0.8, you're, you're forcing it to not overlearn and hopefully not overfit, right? And one of, uh, uh, and I can't remember which, wh what the difference is. They do something similar, but, you know, uh, one for rows, one for, for, for columns. And uh, this, if especially, these can become very handy if you are doing very wide data sets where uh, you know very hard to work with extremely wide ones and um, I think it's a call sample that you want to have smaller uh, anyways this is you know this, this you can find in the documentation I think in the um, in the the PDF I put you know uh, links to the, to the XG boost but they're all over the place right it's such a phenomenal model right now which is interesting is the cat boost I don't know if you played around with cat boost uh, cat boost you don't have to uh, create matrices and you also don't really have to hot encode one hot encode it's actually recommended you don't hot encode because the model will do a better job which is interesting as well and it kind of it kind of scores better I did a video on that one uh, recently you can uh, if you're interested. Uh, let me just swap speeds here. You can go to the video channels and data science, and I think I put it up here. Nope. I think it's in then here. Yeah, here it is. Cat boost versus XG boost. I kind of compare them very, very briefly. It's a five minutes for data science, extremely briefly. Okay, so. Um, that's kind of what we are uh, actually. Uh, oh, I'm not running around one. So we, did we run it? It's still it's still running. Oh, we give it a thousand rounds, and uh, it looks like it's decreasing a little bit every time, right? The smallest the error, the smallest error, the better. And um, uh, let's see, is there something we can look at really quickly? Oh, I did. That's all I put in my notes. So that's all we're gonna get to get to go to. So any questions? I mean, I kind of want to, um, you know, uh, keep this under 30 minutes. I don't want to do it too long. This will be recorded, so uh, if others want to see it, it will be it will be available as 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 soon as I you know clean it up and and and, and load it up. Let me know if you got any questions. Also, um, this is the point here. Really, is uh, even though we haven't gotten, you know, maybe uh, in maybe in two weeks. Uh, well, next week, you know, I want to cover the. Um, uh, the the modeling part, you know, finish this modeling part, uh, and kind of uh, cover the live data. We're gonna, I found a cool API to do the live data, and I kind of want to cover that. And the following week, do the Python anywhere. And that's probably as far as I want to uh, take this. Uh, uh, but but the whole idea here is we're looking, at, we're building web applications that have that that have real value, that are really yielding a product at the end, right? In this case, um, I think there's an image here. Right here, in the, in the end, we're going to be creating this this stock market application where our model will be trained 
uh, on you know this S and P 500 stocks. And here you'll be able to put a live stock, and we're going to use this API, and um, uh, it will kind of predict and or and tell you five days out, right? It'll tell you five days out what it thinks the prediction is going to be, and that's what we're going to do. So the whole idea is not really a stock market here. It's, honestly, it's a toy project. Uh, that I would not trade something like this, uh, but it's um, uh, it's it should be uh, you know transferable to anything else you want to do uh, health app weather app we've done weather apps before um, you know uh, the uh, any 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 modeling that you think is interesting you have an interesting data set this this uh, this pipeline can basically be be used anything you can do in in a Jupyter notebook you can then extend it and the the, the w one of the class when we do Python anywhere which is a fun class is uh, to kind of translate what we think is important in a Jupyter notebook, uh, like you know, uh, into uh, uh, intuitive, easy to understand controls. A lot of people don't care about the AUC score. They don't care about you know. They don't want to be in a in a in a in a, no, in a, in a Jupyter notebook. You know, tweaking little values here and there. That you know, you have to have some background in ML and statistics, in in programming to be able to operate this. So how do you translate that? into a UI that really makes sense, that's easy, that's simple, that's minimal, and yet where they can, you know, and they can get, uh, you know, u uh, actionable intelligence. And here, this is this is kind of, uh, you know, it's not meant to be a beautiful thing, I'm not, I'm not a designer, but the key is there's only two controls, really. There's just uh, uh, the, where you input your, your, your stock and the submit button, that's it. So super intuitive, super simple, and you know you know that you're going to get, and if it's titled stock market predictor, you know you're going you're to get stock market predictions. So any, if there's anything else, uh, let me uh, you know. You're you're welcome to post it, or otherwise we'll uh, we'll end it for tonight. And thank you for every, and thank you all of you who who came. That was great to see uh, all of you here. And I hope you 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 know you found this interesting and useful. And also, you know, you, you, I'm sure most of you are uh, on my newsletter, so don't hesitate to sign up. Uh, let me see, just cover that. That's also an important one. You know, put up if you're not on the newsletter, just sign up. Just put your name there. Sign up, and I send I send an e email with videos and and updates on things every week. But it's also a way of you getting my email address, and then you can also ask me questions. And people always tell me, hey, I like to have videos on this, videos on that. And if I think I know enough about the topic, I'll cover it. Uh, oftentimes, they people ask for things that are not, you know, th th this 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 realm is so large, it covers so many things. A lot of stuff I don't know or would not feel comfortable making videos about it. But if it's something I know, so, so especially in in the the the, the machine learning f slash SaaS web application, something I like to do a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm I'm always happy to to you know to look into it. So that's it for me. Thanks for coming, and uh, you know. Uh, please come back uh, uh, same time. I, I'll, I'll set the time correctly uh, for the following week, uh, 6 p.m. UTC, 2 p.m. Eastern, and we'll continue. And at least two more classes tomorrow. Next one, next week we'll do live data, live stock market data using the API, and uh, the following week we'll do the Python anywhere. Thanks again, guys.